It sounds that just like that motherfucker in what's called, but I just don't want to end on freaking um I said about the Chris Brown part, nigga, like on the book, but I told you this wasn't the most exciting, like most exciting freaking um what's it called anyway. Most exciting part. Like youth and meditation, but it's cool though. But I'm gonna read a little bit more of that. I'm gonna read the part I read already just at, right after the thing, but it's like um, the last time I had a person couldn't be fine. Um, I think I got to this part. A few months ago, I caught another glimpse of this firsthand when I visited the Ideal Academy in Washington, D.C. A school that has integrated meditation into its curriculum. The school, no, a school that has, no, okay, <laughs> the academy is in the middle of a very tough part of D.C. and, like a lot of hood schools, has seen its share of problems. But the school's principal, Dr. George Doc Rutherford, told me that once he introduced two 15-minute quiet times into the student schedule, things began to improve dramatically. After quiet time, teachers say their students are more alert and engaged. Parents say their kids are easier to get along with at home, and students say they feel less anger, less stressed, and better about going to school. Once one of the worst performing schools in D.C., now the Ideal Academy has transformed, that's funny, it's, called, it's really called the Ideal Academy, but <laughs> has transformed thanks to meditation into, the, in, into one of the city's strongest I'm just gonna read there, but I'm gonna skip down one. But um, some people kind of say like it's um, and to them that seems to be a scary idea, kind of like um, putting putting that kind of stuff in, in schools, kind of like because it helps you kind of get closer and connect with God. It's like taking it out of the church and put it into schools, and in some sense, and some people that's kind of scary idea. But like I said, I wanted to read um. So I, I definitely should probably read that more, which I probably will, but um, what I wanted to read last night in the first place was this. So I'm going to actually read this, you know. And this one, I guess the next part will be leaving Z90, Z93, Z93 Gems. And I take off um, the thing on my books, the cover on my books, both of them over there though. As you can see, they look, both look pretty similar. Because <laughs> this is when they take the cover off. You can't really see that one though, like the name of it, but super rich. It's just like, I like how that, I like that. More easy to deal with. And, yeah. But anyway, um, leaving Z93 Gems. There was a growing buzz about my on air presence, but I still couldn't land a full time slot on Z93 Gems. It was a heritage station, one, of, one that has been running the same format for decades, which meant that it had more money, more promotion, more history, and a bigger signal than its competitors. Z93 Jams was and remains the big dog in Charleston region. As a result, Josh rarely left because there was re really no place better to go. I still had my internship in the promotions department and the occasional overnight shift, but I was hungry for more. I wanted to figure out a way to move up the ladder. So I started questioning all the full-time jocks about their journeys, looking for insights into what they've done to get ahead. One thing I noticed was that they all had mass communications degrees. It occurred to me that my lack of a degree could be holding me back. To enhance my resume, I decided to enroll in communications program at Trinidad Trident, no, Trident <laughs> Technical College in Charleston. It seemed like a good idea. But I didn't even make it through the first class. <laughs> Why am I here? 
I ask myself, looking around my fellow at my fellow students, most of them had barely set foot in a radio station, let alone hosted their own show, like I had. Like I had, I've been winning by following my instincts. I told myself, so why now? So why now should I listen to someone else's advice on the right way to do this? There was no good answer to that question, so I walked out of the class and never went back. <laughs> I realized I was hustling backwards at, at that school. I already had the privilege of working at a radio station. Instead of waiting for an instructor to tell me the right way to be on the air, I needed to exercise my privilege and figure it out on my own. I did learn one thing that day. No amount of classroom instruction can ever match the experience you'll get from actually performing a job. Nothing is worth knowing. Nothing that is worth knowing can be taught. Oscar Wilde. Back at GMs, I settled into a groove of helping out with promotions and grabbing whatever air shifts I could. Around that time, there was a female listener named Look like Jamaica. I'm going to say Jamaica, who used to call, who used to call into all the male jocks and talk real freaky to them. Stobat, he's a genius. He said, you know, like, hey, what the heck are you doing? Like, what are you doing? She had a very sexy voice, <clears throat> and people would always get a kick out of her calls. Then one day, I got hit up off the air by some folks who knew Jamaica. I don't know if that's how you say name, but I'm just saying like that. Um, and alerted me to the fact that she was actually a he. I mean, I'm my fault, but <laughs> damn, that's crazy, though. How you posing? Uh, um, they even passed along her government name. The next time to make a call during one of my shifts, I confronted her and said, hey, Jamaica, isn't it true that your name is really such and such? Jamaica wasn't happy about being outed and called up Jams to complain about me. She spoke to the program director, PD, a guy named Terry Bass, and told him she was going to Suda Station. Still there, I guess Suda Station. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Instead of telling Jamaica, hey, I don't see what Charlemagne did wrong, Terry overreacted and took away my shift, regulating me to liners. For those who don't know the term, liners means re recording scripts for the time, weather, and introducing the next song. Technically, I was still on air, but I lost the platform to express my personality. Having to read off a script. Oh, having to read off a script? I don't know what that means. But <laughs> that was the worst thing that could happen to me. I went from being impatient to downright miserable. But as often, <clears throat> but as has often been the case in my career, what seemed to be dead, what seemed to be a dead end was actually God setting me up for the next winning move. A new station called Hot 98.9 was launching, was launched in Charleston to compete with Jams. It didn't have nearly the signal strength as Jams, but it looked, it was looking to make a splash in the market. They'd heard me on Jams and offered me my own night, my own nightly show, seven to midnight, every Monday through Saturday. On paper, staying with GMs would have been a safe bet, even if it meant being stuck on liners for a while. GMs still had the best reputation in the area, and chances were eventually something would have opened up for me. Safe bets, however, have never appealed to me. I quietly agreed. I quit. I, I quietly agreed to a deal with Hot, which wasn't 
uh, betrayal because James had never committed to me full time. <clears throat> a few things I never done at that point in my life <clears throat> had felt better than walking into Terry Bass's office and handing in my resignation letter. Now I gotta read that again, but I gotta go right now because I'm, uh, I'm missing to go. Mm. 